I'll welcome back. Now, Rina Hicks is with me here on studio to just discuss about managing finances in business. But before we delve into that, I'd like her to comment about Edwin Mange's story mm -hmm. where he started a business uh, and then uh, a few years later saying due to maybe regulatory reforms or government policies that his business crumbled. But when you looked at his story, what are some of the things that you picked uh, from uh, uh, history. Yeah. So first of all, before I give my comments, I want to say if he's watching this, I'm very sorry, Edwin, about what has happened. And I hope that you'll be able to thrive in, in this journey. And it's all about learning. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say I don't lose. I always win. I don't fail. I learn. Mm -hmm. And you move from, you know, one level to the other. Now, to respond to that, I think one of the things that happens is before you start the business, you need to be clear about what problem am I solving? And he, I think he did identify that. But even as you do that, the solution that you offer needs to be well researched. So um, I think it would have been uh, advisable for him to research deeply around what are the requirements I need to have? Are there any reg regulatory issues that I need to be aware of? Um, a lot of small businesses also struggle because of uh, the Kenya Revenue Authority, so their taxes. Either they don't put aside taxes in a separate account so that when it comes due, either on the 20th of the month or each quarter or every year when they need to pay, they don't have cash available. Mm -hmm. And so they decide, okay, let me wait until I have cash. And the problem with that is that then it ends up catching up on you. Or perhaps they don't even know that they need to, you know, when they deduct payee from their employees to deduct it or perhaps or to pay it mm -hmm. to, to, to carry or perhaps even don't deduct at all and then end up in, in big trouble. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the issues that happen. So I think it's important for somebody before you start your business, spend a bit of time understanding the nuts and bolts of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, beginning with what is this problem? Is it really a problem? Do people understand this as a problem? Mm -hmm. I, and do they recognize it as a problem? I might see it as a problem and a need, but do the people I want to serve recognize it as a need and a problem? Okay. And then the solution that you you have is it a solution that they like mm -hmm. and you have to it's an iterative process of trying failing trying again tweaking so because Edwin has failed in that aspect I think it's not to say I'm not a good business person it's to learn mm -hmm. and to pick up from okay this is what I've now learned and he can then now grow from there so mm -hmm. he shouldn't give up at all so maybe from what you've picked was there like an underlying issue apart from the regret the regulatory reforms and government policies and also some of uh, the taxes that he had to pay that saw him like now uh, maybe look into other areas uh, of doing business mm -hmm. but when it comes to managing finances yeah. in businesses which is very key and most small businesses ignore that. Yeah. Maybe you can start by telling us uh, what the importance of managing finances in your business. Yeah, I think it's very key because as you run your business, you sell and create an income, but people confuse that income or revenue with profit. So, you know, you receive money in your bank account, you see you have a healthy bank balance and you assume you have money available for you to spend. So what do you do? You have a debit card perhaps for the business, you go into Kafu or to wherever, you know, ShopRite and you swipe that card and you mix up your personal finances with your business finances. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we find that um, a lot of businesses do is beyond separation of personal and business money is lack of controls internally. You know, the same person who's receipting is the same person who's going to do the banking, is the same person who is doing the accounting. And so because of that, then you have lack of controls and you don't actually have sight of um, the money. Mm -hmm. And then what typically would happen is that theft can take place, errors occur, and as the entrepreneur who's going out seeking new business, then you don't have a handle on how your business is actually doing. Mm -hmm. And also keeping accounts. You know, how am I really doing? How Did I make a profit last month? Keeping accounts and proper records is another problem that typical small businesses uh, suffer from. And it's so key, just like it is with managing your personal finances, managing your business finances needs to be done well mm -hmm. and separately from your personal finances so that you can track growth, you can finance your uh, your needs for growth as a business and so that you know you prosper as a business not you know being hand to mouth for an eternity mm -hmm. you know you find a lot of people have been in business for 50 years 30 years 40 years mm -hmm. but you don't really see growth because they're not able to um, you know sort of spend money well in their businesses 
fund growth and identify what is working, what is not, take out what's not working, add to what is, and so on and so forth. But you do that by tracking how everything is doing, by looking at the numbers, because they help you understand how you really are doing. Yeah. But that requires discipline, because as you've said, you have to know, you have to track your personal financing before you even go ahead and say that I'm going to manage finances in my business. Yeah. Uh, but how do you achieve that discipline, maybe to ensure that maybe how I'm dealing with the finances in or in my business, that's, it's accountable. I can, I can say that this shilling went here, here and there and there. You know, Carol, I would ask you, when was the last time you achieved something that you really wanted? You know, you took time, did not eat, or, you know, you wanted to lose weight, for example, because I think many people identify with weight loss or, mm -hmm. you know, you have a target for something. You, when you have a goal, and it's a very clear goal of something that you want to achieve, whether that's to travel, whether that's to take your children to school, you know, you, especially like education for kids, mm -hmm. people sacrifice so much to do that. Where is, is it that they have discipline? Are they more disciplined than other people? I, I think, I tend to think that what typically happens is we start on a journey without thinking through where are we going? What do I want to achieve? When you start with goals in mind, very clear goals about what you want to do, you just have razor sharp focus and whatever it needs to take for me to be able to achieve that goal, I will do it. And so the first thing I would say is understand what your goals are as an individual and then you'll find that you will actually be disciplined about it like the discipline will come because you're so focused you're so it's something that you truly desire from the bottom of your heart and you find that 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 you know you look for every way possible to ensure that you put in the right systems in place put in the right if it's tracking you will track if you want to achieve if you don't have food for example at the end of the week and you can save 20 bob, 30 bob every day to achieve the goal of eating on Friday, mm -hmm. you will do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the discipline comes from having a goal. Okay. Yeah. Maybe something, uh, another mistake I have seen uh, small startups actually do is maybe diversifying too early. And maybe we'll talk a little bit about that and also about uh, ca cash flows. Okay. But we have seen maybe uh, my friend maybe has, let's say, three or four outlets. Yeah. Now okay. I want to expand my business and yet I do not have the right or the financial, the finances maybe to be able to diversify diversify what would you say about that you want to diversify but you don't have the but you finances. don't have the finances that you you, you, you require maybe to endure because you have seen maybe your friend uh, say they have opened two three four branches now you want now to go that way yeah mm. so uh, well I think it needs to be investigated what is the why, why diversify how is the current business you're doing performing um, so the problem that you're solving is it working the solution you have to solve that problem is it working who's your customer is that customer segment um, responding well to your business or your product or your service? Um, you know, how, what are your key metrics in terms of how you're making money? How do you measure success? Uh, what are your costs? You know, with all those things in place and you're clear about your current business, then you can make a decision about diversifying into something else. And when you make a decision to diversify, it needs to be well informed. You've done your research around what it is that you want to do. And then if you need to finance it, you can perhaps carry on with this business that's currently working, save money, put in place, you know, sort of a kind of a war chest that then enables you to start off on this other side. I think it's difficult to diversify when you don't have any clear or clarity of where you want to go, what business you want to do. Um, mm -hmm. But when you have that and the opportunity is clear, you can also get investors, if you don't have the money, for example, you can inv get investors to come and co-invest with you, especially if it's something that's well-researched and it's clear there's an opportunity that um, is in that sector or that industry that you want to go in. Mm -hmm. I think clarity is the first thing. Money usually comes next. Um, and so what I find a lot of people t tend to do is you have an idea, you think it's a good one, you want to go ahead and do it, and then you borrow the money to try it out without really thinking through the opportunity to the end. Mm -hmm. The beauty about also talking to people is they'll ask you very key questions. You know, what are your thoughts around this? Have you thought about this? Have you thought about this other issue? And you're like, oh, oh, I should have thought about that. Mm -hmm. And so bringing in others, as opposed to just going to get a loan from a Shylock or a loan from a friend, is when you bring in others, even if it's just to so as a sounding board, then you're able to, to actually clarify whether this idea of diversification is a good one and whether or not you should go ahead with it. But people shouldn't be too focused. I find when people are starting businesses, the first question is, um, where can I find money? Mm -hmm. You know, as opposed to where can I refine my idea mm -hmm. and just ensure that this thing that I'm setting out on is, is, is something that has um, 
an, a huge opportunity. Okay, yeah. maybe as we come to a close, how can you address maybe impulsive purchase? Because uh, that is, aff affects also finances in your business. Maybe you see something, or oh, you want to upgrade your office, you want to put up new chairs and all this, and yet maybe that money would have helped you in one way or the other maybe to grow your business. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it comes down to planning and understanding what you want to achieve every single season or year. And when you plan, you know, these are the things I need to achieve for my business, which means I need to spend on, say, HR needs, I need to spend on marketing, I need to do X, Y, Z, I'll need to pick a array on this date and ensure that this is done. When you don't have a plan, you know, whether that's a spending plan or a plan for how you're going to execute in a certain season, then you tend to have those impulsive purchases. I think people need to be very careful about how they spend money, particularly where businesses are concerned, especially in the first initial years. You need to try and keep as much money aside as you can because a big problem with business as it grows and as you're trying to scale, then it becomes very challenging to find the resources to enable you to scale because you need IT systems, you need people to be able to do those things. So I, th I think the best way to do it is plan ahead, think through where you want to go, and then that way you'll be able to assign resources at the right time where they need to go and you know how much you have available to you to then spend on the things that you need. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rina Hicks, for coming to our studios. Well, there has been Rina Hicks, who is an investment advisor, talking about how you can be able to manage your finances in business. Now, we take a short commercial break and when we come back, we'll be telling you what's happening in the world of sports.